Vestigial organs, what are they? Vestigial organs are organs for which there's no function demonstrated. In other words, the people think it has no use. So vestigial means useless. The ones who coined this word think that these organs which are useless are a vestige or a trace of something that's no longer useful. They postulated or, or decided that they were once functional, but in the course of evolutionary history, they lost their usefulness and gradually deteriorated. And at one time, evolutionists listed 180 different organs in the body in man that they thought were useless. Well, let's look at some of these. These are some organs that were once considered useless, once considered vestigial. One was the pituitary gland. It's thought to be the master gland of the body right now. It's important for growth and other things. The tonsils were thought to be useless. Do you know that when I had my tonsils taken out, my brother and I, they marched us to the hospital. It was just a routine thing. Almost every child my age, we just go and have our tonsils removed. It was really a serious operation. Tonsillectomy is not a minor operation, but this was just because they thought it had no use. Now they realize that it helps to fight off infections. So I would dare say, if I asked you right now, how many in this class have had their tonsils removed? Nobody. That's amazing. None of you. Because now they know tonsils have a function. But I wouldn't doubt that you'd be asked maybe your grandparents that they had their tonsils removed. Then there's the coccyx. They thought that this was a tailbone. You know, just a useless, since we no longer have a tail, it's useless. But they found out that the pelvic muscles are attached to it. And you can't even sit comfortably without the coccyx. And the coccyx protects the end of the spinal column and it's just the terminal portion of the backbone. After all, the backbone had to have an end. Then there's the appendix. Anybody here had their appendix taken out? So they, this still does cause some problems, but just because it causes problems doesn't mean you remove it. For example, have you ever had a sore throat? Wouldn't it be awful they removed your throat because, <laughs> because it got sore once in a while? But they feel like the appendix has some functions. It adds lubricating fluids to the intestines. It is felt to secrete some digestive juices. And it's even thought that it may produce white blood cells. Kind of interesting, monkeys don't have an appendix. So if the evolutionist's idea was right, that would mean the monkeys would be further along the evolutionary trail than humans. That's a lot of nonsense. So just because you don't know the use of something does not mean it's useless. It's just that your knowledge may be limited. I was telling you about the person here in town that's working on the doctorate in biology and the thing that it's selling him a bill of goods on is they say on the biochemical level that there are parts of the cell and so forth that are useless. No, not so. They just probably haven't discovered it. It is so complex. Let's examine the evidence. No genetic evidence for a method where useless organs deteriorate has been produced. As I mentioned before, the function of an organ may not yet be discovered. So just so because somebody 100 years ago cut up the body and found things that they thought had no use doesn't mean it had no use. And it also, it's possible an organ would have use during the growth period, a certain time, and doesn't, isn't needed right now. The function of an organ may be taken over by another organ when it's removed. For example, the spleen, which I understand produces red corpuscles before birth, but in the adult it normally doesn't produce red corpuscles. But they claim that if you have a severe hemorrhage, the spleen may start functioning again in this fashion. Another thing that's interesting about the human body is that there are a number of items in the human body where God created in pairs. Now, it is true that it's an advantage. For example, two eyes is an advantage for depth perception. But if you do lose an eye, you can survive. Two ears gives us a, what, kind of like, like stereotype hearing, but you can survive if you're deaf in one ear. We have two lungs. We have two kidneys. 
There's people who have donated their kidneys to somebody else. Barbara Hildebrand, who her husband and her are pastoring in Jordan right now. She is a precious girl. She donated one of her kidneys to her sister. That's real sacrifice. Brother Abbott, who's pastoring in Scottsdale, Arizona, his daughter Debbie is going to donate a kidney to her father. But you can survive, which is the one. We're going to have a chapter on the human body. The human body is a marvelous creation. We are, as David said, wonderfully and fearfully made. We don't understand maybe all the things, although most of these things now, in fact, I think all 180 on the list they have found a use for. And the list of useless structures, of course, decreases as they discover more and more about the human body. And now as they get into the biochemical thing, we're back to the point where we're not understanding, but understanding will increase. Uh, humans aren't the only creatures. Whales have a structure that is called hip bones. It's, I got a quotation. Hip bones by some because evolutionists think that whale, being a mammal, that it once was a land-dwelling creature. It had legs and thus when it got in the sea, it no longer needed them any longer, but the hip bone is still a vestige of the evolutionary past. <laughs> I have to laugh, some of this stuff is so dumb. Well, again, the whale hip bone, it's necessary for a number of internal organs to be supported, muscles to be attached. Then some snakes have spurs. Evolutionists try to claim that that's the remains of what was once legs. It's turned out those snakes do use these structures for weapons, and they use these spurs to secure traction.